kind of uh, run through this really quickly, um, but I want to allow some time for questions and discussion. So I thought it was just good to remind ourselves where we are. And I think over the past kind of several months, we're, we're all learning, we've all seen that a virtual community is a valid community. Um, and for some of us, that's been a, a learning curve. Uh, I've been really impressed by how churches have, have been as I've spent kind of 13 years in pastoral ministry and it's renewed my faith in church memberships, how quickly they've moved with change. I don't think I've ever seen uh, churches adapt so quickly to a new situation and that's been exciting. I think we're seeing people are finding ways to access online where they've not normally uh, done so. So what we're seeing is those that maybe were on the fringe of the church uh, are accessing and peering in to what the churches are doing. Millennials and Generation uh, Z are accessing and becoming far more involved in church services. Uh, what's wonderful is sometimes where there's a connection where people have moved away to university, they're still plugging in to their kind of sending church. Um, churches have found a space that works for, for you guys, whether that's WhatsApp, Zoom, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I've not found a church that does TikTok yet. I'm still waiting for that one. But I think what we've really, really noticed and really what I want to hone in is technology is a language and not a tool. I think one of the mistakes we can fall into when we think about uh, mission uh, when we use social media and technology, we're just, we can fall in the trap of using it as an online notice board, uh, which doesn't uh, give it all the breadth that it's got. And so we need to embrace technology as a new way of preaching, as a new way of teaching, as a new way of sharing the gospel, not just pointing to what we've always done in the past. And this season is a really interesting season, isn't it? Kind of September to December is a time when normally we'd be doing so much outreach in the community. We've got Halloween, often we'd do light parties. Forgive me, I'm a non-conformist, so I forget harvest. But we would be looking at kind of Halloween and light parties. You might even do something for firework night, Remembrance Day or Sunday, and of course, Christmas. And as we're thinking and planning about what they might look like online, as we don't know what's going to happen with physical gatherings, but I assume, like many churches, you're in the position where you can't fit everyone in the building that would normally come. And so we need to start at the beginning. Often when we've done outreach, because they've been part of our programmes for years, we've just got on and done them. And now is the time to stop. Look at every activity you're doing, whether it's as a light party, fireworks, remembrance, around Christmas and think, what are these activities reflecting on? What's the purpose of them? What are we communicating about them? Now, forgive me if this sounds simple, but Christmas is about... Jesus, the Messiah, saviour of the world, coming in to our dark situation and bringing light. You know that. Many people that come to your church know that. Your next door neighbour may not. There's a whole load of people. So we need to start right back from basics. We cannot assume a Christian knowledge. We need to think about our audience when we're reaching out. Please don't hear me wrong. What I'm seeing is some fantastic stuff. We're being really creative in worship and not necessarily creative in mission. And the reason I say that is often we're focusing all our energies on producing a service that we would normally do for those in our churches, rather than thinking about um, people who have no church experience. And so, when you're planning activities, you almost need to think of them or services or whatever it is, outreach, you need to think of them from two different angles. Is this for those in the church or is this for those who don't know the church? I'm going to focus on the latter 
of those this afternoon. And be creative. There is a, an absolute abundance of creative resources and free resources that you can use. Don't be limited by what you've done in the past. So things to think about, as I said, in the planning, uh, who your audience is, what you're going to do. People are bombarded with messages all the time, especially on social media. If you're trying to engage with people digitally, you have to be aware there is a fatigue. And therefore, where, what you put out, the time you put it out, and the content is really important. So, for example, if you're going to put something on Facebook that you think is going to um, interest a certain people, the majority of people that use Facebook um, are between uh, kind of our some younger people use it, but predominantly 35 to kind of 65 are those that use Facebook. You want to do that first thing in the morning so that when they scroll up, they see it. If you want to hit millennials and Generation Z, and I know these are um, brush strokes of an overview, don't put something out at six o'clock in the morning. It's going to drop off the feed by the time we wake up. That's the reality of it. So you need to think about that. Publicity is really key. Think about how you would have publicized something in the past. You may have put a poster up outside your church. You may have leafleted your, the, the houses uh, in your community. All the social media platforms have paid ads. And this is brilliant because you can target your advertising to a postcode. I would recommend that if you have any publicity budget, set aside finances to publicize a paid event. It means that everyone in your community that uses that form of social media will see your message. That's a really good tool to have. One click evangelism. This is a phrase that's been used that I love. Um, it's not an original phrase from me. I can't remember where I first heard it but I've nicked it. Uh, one click evangelism is all of your church that are on social media can become evangelists. All they have to do is share your post. That's all they have to do is like it, share it and say, wow, isn't this great? Make a comment. Automatically then their whole friendship and family base will see whatever you're pushing out. So that's a really good way of engaging your church. What you also need to think is what, what is next? What's the next step? Often when we do these one-off events, we just kind of leave people hanging. But what are you gonna do if people have questions? What are you gonna do if people wanna explore this further? Often people say, we'll come to our Sunday service. Sunday services are great, but it's a huge step for people who have never come into church, even more so in the digital world. There's an anonymity with YouTube, and that's great. There's not an anonymity with Zoom. And so you need to think, what are the next steps that we're taking people on a journey with? So for example, if you are doing something for Guy Fawkes Night, at the end of that, whatever it is, at whatever you do, Put a tag into your next event. So there's a constant thread that's going on. Also have something to follow, whether that's on your website or through social media. So for example, use the same hashtag. If you use the same hashtag on everything, when someone clicks on that hashtag, they're automatically brought up everything you've done in the past and everything you're doing in the future. Everyone else who's using that hashtag, they connect with. Obviously, there's a guide about that. Be careful about the words you use. Um, Christians can sometimes use terms which in the secular world have very different meanings. And so you have to be very careful about what you're choosing to hashtag. When we think about digital mission, especially with the things coming up from Remembrance to Christmas, you really need to think about whether you want to do live services or pre-recorded. 
Um, as pre-recorded, I'm a big fan of. And the reason I'm a big fan of it is because if technology fails, it still works. Also, if you're looking at doing evangelism, outreach, it's not in everyone's psyche now to turn up at a set time. I wonder if I was to ask you how often you watch live TV. I hardly ever watch live TV anymore. And it's interesting, I was chatting to my parents, they don't watch live TV that much anymore either. And I say that because I don't think it's divided by age. I think people are so used to catch up. They're so used to binge watching. So therefore you have to create something that delivers well, no matter what time of the day it is viewed. Don't be disheartened if only a handful of people turn up to a live event because people that watch the recording afterwards um, are far more, the engagement's far more. And so therefore, if you pre-record, you've got time to plan. You've got time to involve more people. Live service is obviously great in order for getting the fellowship. Then you need to think about to Zoom or not to Zoom. Uh, Zoom is great. Don't get me wrong, it's enabled us to do lots. But Zoom for people who are coming in cold to a church service is awkward. Even more so, arguably, than coming into a church building. At least if you were coming into a church building, you could hide at the back. You know, you can't do that on Zoom. You have to look at everyone's faces. That's quite intimidating if you don't know anyone. Also, if you're going to pub, just as an aside rather than outreach, if you're going to do something publicly in Zoom, don't pe put all the details out. If you say to people, contact us for the Zoom link, they're not going to do that. If they're, if they're curious, if they're, if they're on the sidelines, they're not going to do it. Don't put a password on an open link Zoom meeting. What that communicates is you have to pass a barrier to get in here. Now, I know Zoom have put security stuff on, but you can preference just the waiting room. It's a really small thing that we don't think of. But for those of us that aren't used to a Christian community, and this is a whole new world that they're stepping into, there are just more and more barriers and hurdles. The other thing is connect with other churches. If there is another association church or even, even, God even works outside of the South Wales Baptist Association. If there is another church that you can link with, sometimes that's a good idea. Communities don't often understand the differences between churches. They just want someone to communicate the gospel to them. They want someone to listen. They're not that bothered about denomination at this stage. So therefore work with other churches. You know, don't tire yourself out replicating what others are doing. Community events, and this is where the kind of digital world um, morphs with the physical world in one sense. Do you remember right back at the start of this, we all went out and clapped for the NHS, didn't we? Now that was started virally, that went viral. So um, someone put on their Facebook page, wouldn't it be great? if we all went out and clapped for the NHS. That got picked up and then it was done. What would it look like in your streets to rebuild that, that and work on it? What if on Remembrance Sunday, you did a social media targeted campaign for your street and said, uh, we're all gonna come out this time and do an act of remembrance. What about at Christmas, if when you would normally have your carol service, wherever your church is, instead of um, uh, kind of going out, you, you say, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to stand on our doorsteps and sing a carol. Now, I appreciate some churches are in a residential street, some aren't. But what would it look like if, if every individual in your church took an act of remembrance 
or a Christmas carol and did that in your street at the same time. It would create that sense of community. Just think about those small acts that you can do physically. Link it to wider events. So if, if one church is doing it, then see if other churches will do it as well and see if you can use the same hashtag. So for example, the Church of England, every December have a different hashtag. So whoever you, last year they used follow the star. Whoever did anything and put follow the star in, it brought up all the Anglican stuff that was going on. See if you can do that locally with your churches. Your online presence is really important. Please don't fall into the trap of repeating the same message on all your social medias. By that, I mean you have a Facebook post that you then copy and paste into Twitter and Instagram. They are three different platforms for, for a reason. They have three different target audiences. Facebook allows you more words. You can put more detail in it. If you put a video on Facebook, it needs to be longer than three minutes, but not longer than five minutes in order to get the most views. Twitter, you want a, a video that lasts one minute and five seconds. Uh, and you only got 128 characters, half of which should be hashtags. Instagram is all about the image. You have 59 seconds of a video before you've then got a double click. Think about all this in how you're communicating. So if you produce a promo for something, do it for if 10 minutes, then cut it down for the others. So if you're trying to communicate what the gospel is, You've got to see if you can do that in 59 seconds. That's what you've got to think. When we're talking about reaching out, that's what you've got to think of. And again, the paid publicity is key. One thing I think is really, really important when we think about evangelism in this is engagement. Often we use these platforms as, as I said, as notice boards. So we say, this is what we're doing on this Sunday, come to this, this is what it is. But actually what you're trying to do is cultivate a conversation on this platform, okay? So you might on Instagram put a, uh, a gospel message for 59 seconds and then ask for people to engage, have a question. Don't then fall into the trap of answering that question. Just allow a natural dialogue like you would normally. All the things about evangelism first being about listening and not about pushing things down others' throats is really important, especially on social media. Try and look at how you engage in those ways. It's difficult, it takes more planning, but it's really key. Also, when you're using these, in order to build up an online presence, it needs to be consistent. You can't just do it one, you know, put one post out one week and then nothing out for a week after. You have to actively engage with others. Um, so I know of uh, churches that have a paid person to do their social media. Their sole job is to do social media. Now, some of you may think, oh, if only we had the spare cash to get someone just to do that. But the reality is you would employ someone maybe to work with your children, youth and families. You may employ someone to be a chaplain somewhere. There's something about setting aside a good chunk of time and valuing it to do outreach online. And of course, the key is this is a language and not at all. 